Hello number ones, welcome back to my channel. This is the Metatron speaking. Today we have a quite bizarre, but I think also intriguing topic. Would it be humanly possible to study, understand and even speak an alien language? prime factor that we need to keep in mind as we begin our linguistic journey is that our study of the nature and form of such languages remains purely speculative, as no such project for extraterrestrial life has detected any sign of intelligent life beyond Earth. Hence, the ultimate purpose of our video will be stimulating academic debate, and in the best of cases, learning how to prepare for a proper, accurate linguistic analysis. Just in case. Xenolinguistics, exolinguistic or astrolinguistics is the hypothetical study of the language of alien species. Theoretical linguistics shall also be part of this study, as it is the branch of linguistics that is most concerned with developing models of linguistic knowledge. In other words, theoretical linguistics also involves the search for an explanation of linguistic universals, that is, properties that all, or at least many languages, have in common, in order to begin to create a three-dimensional linguistic spectrum of possibilities and variables that could help us understand the kind of challenges to comprehension that we would face in initiating and maintaining a dialogue in a highly uncertain situation. Often, as we try to imagine what an alien language might sound like, we try to imagine these odd, unusual sounds that we make as different from a native tongue as we possibly can. But to have a more professional approach to this matter, the very first thing we should ask should be, what form would an alien language take? And more specifically, would humans recognize it as a language if they encountered it? Even in the case of a verbal communication system, human speech is limited because there are only a certain amount of sounds we can make. What capabilities aliens might have in producing sounds would be a primarily important factor to assess in the early stages of a first encounter or in the case of a message received from beyond Earth. Now, these differences would possibly, but not necessarily, create articulatory differences between different species. Now, this is all impressive, but before trying to imagine and predict what sounds an alien language might have, we should take into consideration the possibility that it might not have any sounds at all. Say honeybees, for example. Their communication system does not involve sound. Honeybees, or Apis mellifera, have one of the most complex pheromonal communication systems found in nature, possessing 15 known glands able to produce an array of compounds. These pheromones are mixtures of chemical substances released by individual bees into the hive or environment that cause changes in the psychology and behavior of other bees. We have two main alarm pheromones, for instance, which have been identified in honeybee workers. One is released by the Koshevnikov gland near the sting shaft and consists of over 40 chemical compounds, including isopentyl acetate, butyl acetate, 1 hexanol and butanol, 1 octanol, hexyl acetate, octyl acetate, pentyl acetate, and 2 nonanol. Brain differences should also be thoroughly studied, as, for instance, place cells in the brain play a dramatically important role in constructing a cognitive map of our surrounding. In other words, having access to the cognitive map of an alien based on its place of origin would be a priceless element in deciphering any kind of message. A cognitive map is a type of mental representation which serves an individual to acquire, code, store, recall and decode information about the relative location and attributes of phenomena in their everyday or metaphorical spatial environment. 
We can find cognitive maps in various fields and disciplines, such as education, archaeology, geography, landscape, architecture, management, history and even psychology. Both humans and animals use them to find their way and to help recall important features of the environment. It was introduced by psychologist Tolman to explain how rats learned the locations of rewards in a maze. A cognitive map provided the rat with a useful model of the environment. Irrelevant or unimportant information was excluded from the mental map. Thus, cognitive maps can be very different from an actual place. The differences between the mental representation and the physical characteristics of a location may reveal what humans, animals or aliens from our point of view, consider important. In fact, asking people to sketch a map of a location is a way to find out what its salient features are for them. A cognitive map can show what is important and by omission reveal what is less important. This would be incredibly important to understand the mental psychology of an alien being, which would probably be derived from their environment. In fact, cognitive maps can be constructed for spaces as small as a rat's maze or as large as planet Earth. However, this is all easier said than done, as in order to create a robust cognitive map, we will need a whole variety of stimuli and sensory cues. So it is highly probable that considering our current stage of evolution and considering the technological advancement that a species which managed to reach Earth would have, our current culture and understanding would not contain the variety of data needed to control the complex conditions to which we would be exposed. Any momentary significance reached and achieved through interpretation would probably be experienced as a magnification of inconsistencies, contradictions and incompleteness, gradually accumulating, becoming increasingly apparent as conditions change. Similarly to Mandarin Chinese, a native language, even in the case of a verbal language, might have some uh, tones or even more complex, harmonious transformations, qualitative transformations that we might not be able to even perceive and that we would not be able to reproduce with our phonetic apparatus. Well, I hope that you enjoyed this linguistic video. And as always, please remember to subscribe to my channel for more linguistic and historical videos. And remember, the Metatron has produced wings. Bye. Oh, and before I forget, noble ones, please consider sharing this video with your friends and family. And again, thank you for your time. It was a pleasure having you here.